What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Evans, your host for Couple to Thruple, and here is where we're gonna be diving into all the episodes each drop. So I want you to know, right now that there will be spoilers. So if you haven't seen all of the episodes, that's one, two, and three from the first drop, you wanna pause this video right now, you wanna go watch those episodes and then come back so we can dive into it. We've got Dr. Shamira Howard here. She's gonna be joining us with Brittany and Sean and we are diving in to everything you did and didn't see on episode one through three. It is so good to have everybody back together again. Shamira, Sean, yeah. Brittany. Ah! Crazy, baby. <laughs> All this chocolate in one place, I can't take it. <laughs> okay, so Shamira, I do want to start with you because uh, I want I want people to understand, have a little bit more uh, awareness about your background and why okay. you had to be my expert in this experience. Tell everybody what your experience has been like as a therapist, but also yes. in your work with couples in uh, polyamorous relationships and open relationships. So have you ever heard someone say, oh, we're not having enough sex, or they might have said something like, we need to work on our communication, or we want to add another partner or two other partners in, but we don't know how to do that. That's when they come on the green couch to my office. So I am a licensed clinical social worker um, with a doctorate degree in social work. So I'm Dr. Shamira. Dr. Now. Shamira okay. Howard. <laughs> Thank you. And so I am also a certified sex therapist um, with a private practice in Louisiana where I specialize in sex and relationship therapy. I've been doing this for over 16 years now, and it's very rewarding, it's very interesting, and I love the work. And so my experience with non-monogamy, specifically ethical, what we call ethical or consensual non-monogamy, is rooted in my practice because that's one of my specialties. So people come to me when they're questioning whether or not they want to open their relationship or when they want to create agreements and boundaries and contracts. Do, do you find that there you're seeing more and more people interested, curious about this uh, option for them a, a, in a relationship? Absolutely. So there is some research that's showing that now more people, especially people who practice monogamy, are becoming more interested in non-monogamy practices, such as polyamory and other types of non-monogamy. So at least one in three people have mentioned that they are interested in some type of non-monogamy. Wow. Okay, so what is, yes. the, what is the difference between an open relationship and a polyamorous relationship? Oh, that's a good one. And I know a lot of people are going to want to know that. So open relationships and polyamorous or poly relationships all fall under the umbrella of non-monogamy, right? And so what that means is for an open relationship or for a non-monogamous relationship, it just means that you're interested in more than one partner, right? You have more than one partner, uh, more than one type of relationship. Polyamorous, of course, meaning multiple love. Uh, is more than one romantic relationship simultaneously. So you might have one, two, three, or more partners, and within that, there are different structures. So some people have what we call hierarchies, where they might have a primary partner, and each of them have their own partners or metamors, and they have we have all types of terminology. We don't have to get into the vocabulary of it all, but there are different types, and some people don't practice any type of hierarchy. They just practice different types of um, polyamory. And then we have open relationships. Now, open relationships are relationships where couples, they want to specifically focus on being able to have sex with other people, not necessarily building romantic relationships. Ah, uh, so it's, it's more physical in nature, not emotional, Correct. that kind of connection. Absolutely. And there are so many different types of open relationships because we have BDSM, we have swinging partners, we have partners who open their relationships for other types of reasons. So there's so many different facets in the world of non-monogamy. Yes, a lot. That's a whole, whole lot. 
Well, it okay, is. it is, and it, it's one of the reasons why I was so excited about this opportunity to bring these scenarios to a mainstream audience, right? To, to allow more and more people to have like an inside track as to what this experience could look like for them, that this experience is a real viable option for a lot of people out there, not to say it's for everybody, for, for sure, definitely, definitely not saying that. that. Tell me why, Dr. Shamira, you wanted to be a part of this show. So I initially didn't want to be a part of any types of shows surrounding polyamory or non-monogamy mm -hmm. unless it was structured in a way that didn't exploit the lifestyle. Okay. I wanted to be a part of this show because I was told that this is not what this show was about. And so when I got the concept of it and when I was listening and talking and getting excited about it, I was like, you know what? This show is an opportunity to show the world what I'm seeing on the green couch. It's to show the world what it would look like into a portion of polyamory and non-monogamy, specifically with couples who have no experience with non-monogamy and polyamory. And it's right. important for people to see that even if you're poly, this ain't your poly, right? <clears throat> this isn't right. This is an exploration of curious couples. And that is why I wanted to be a part of this because there's a lot of education that goes into it. Um, there's a lot of empathy and compassion that needs to go and just a lot of coaching that people who need the information, they want to get from someone who's credible, who probably knows what they're talking about and who they think could help them steer them or guide them in the way that they specifically want to go. So that is the reason why I wanted to be a part of this show. Okay, and lastly, I'll ask you, and then we'll dig into the the episodes because who the drop, y'all? The drop was <laughs> dropping. Who they dropped it like? It's, they dropped it like it's hot. I tell you what. Okay, so, <laughs> like it's hotter than her. So, what do you think? What do you think people's biggest misconception about polyamory, or maybe even about this yeah. show? One of the overall biggest misconceptions that I see personally is that people think polyamory is just an excuse for people who want to cheat mm -hmm. in their monogamous relationships, mm -hmm. right? So they don't recognize that these are people who are actually interested in other relationships as well. And they have an agreement with their partner. So this is, you know, it's usually a mutual, it's supposed to be when it's ethical, a mutual interest. And what I'm seeing as an overall misunderstanding or misconception about this show and polyamory all around the board are, is that this is just threesomes and orgies all over the place. <laughs> This orgy on up. Um, That's what they think. Orgy, threesome, <laughs> which is totally not, um, it's totally not the case. However, we know that in any relationship, sex is a vital part of relationships, and that's a other the uh, uh, that is another piece that we explore in any relationship, and especially in polyamorous relationships. And it's hard navigating sex in a monogamous relationship. So you can only imagine in a non-monogamous relationship, the things that comes up when it's time to navigate sex. Listen, if you're gonna be lazy, Polly is not the the world for hey, you. Hey, you're lazy. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, Sean, it is so good to see um, y'all. <laughs> My gosh, I wish I could hug you right now. Talk about what made y'all decide, you know what, let's try this show. Let's go down to Panama and see what we see. Look at Sean. Brittany, you want to take this one? <laughs> so I know for us, it's always been something that like we joked about saying, you know, we plan on being together forever because we're like practicing. That's yeah. how we get each other. So we always said, fuck it. Once we're like 50 or something like that, let's start swinging, you know, and like throwing the idea out there. But we were always just like, I mean, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're open to it. And in our lives out here too, we've been approached quite a few times where people have either like, got us a little lit and stole us. And we kind of, you know, stopped and be like, oh shit, let's, let's go home, you know? So when the chance came along and how they explained it to us, we seen it as an opportunity to like grow more. And then also at the same time, like, okay, cool. Maybe we don't wait till we're 50 and we'll figure it out now if it's something that we like. Or, yeah, I feel like it all just you know. like aligns kind of like yeah. at the right time. Cause like, I'm not even 30 yet. I was about to be, so I was like, you know what? Let's try this now before yeah. I get 30, you know what I mean? And what better way to try it now and have cameras everywhere that can actually watch us. Like, right? You know what I mean? There's no speaking of, we're doing this right here. 
and let's see if it's, you know, something that we're interested in. So, yeah, I mean, I was nervous about it. I thought about all the possibilities, right? Like, what if we, you know, broke up? What if I hated him? What if he hated me? Yeah. Um, so all those things did um, go through my brain prior to joining the show. So I'm not going to act like it was like, yes, I'm going to do it. That's it. No, I definitely was like a little back and forth about it. So I will say like, too, also, when we first got there and we like got into the experience. It's like, like this is real. This shit is real. This is real. You know what I'm saying? I think like after the first day when we had to choose one, I was like, oh, my God. oh God, we have to like all sleep together. <laughs> One of the things that you say uh, in the in the in the the drop was, uh, as of right now, I don't even know how sex is gonna work. Like I don't know how we're even gonna exactly. do that. Honestly, I don't even remember what I was even talking about. But what do you think you meant? Like I was so either I was talking to Ramon and Oshman about their situation and something that they were talking about. But I know, like, as far as my experience on the show and what that would mean to me, I didn't know how sex was going to work because it's not like I'm having a threesome with two girls who I just met or I, you know, don't care about. I love this person, you know? Yep. So I'm also navigating something that we're doing together. But I would say I'm highly cautious of my partner's feelings and how she feels. So for me... I'm going at her pace, and that's definitely going to, I would say, without it sounding crazy, I'm not going to 100% be how I would be in this kind of situation because it's not that kind of situation. You know what I'm saying? So that's why in the moment I wasn't sure because we've never been here, so I don't know, you know, how it's going to go. Like some couples had experience with, like, threesomes and all that. Yeah. We've never done it. Never. So we were just, like, we walking in. It. We joke about it. Right. But we're just walking in, like, Blind leading the blind, yeah. you know. So, <laughs> so when when you actually got there, right in that in the your first day there, mm -hmm. right, and you got there and you realized this was it's about to get real. This is real. We're here. We got to do this. Yes. Yeah. What was the first thought outside of how we're going to sleep in the bed together? What was your first thought that first day? Like when the. Because <laughs> Brittany, you were adorned. You looked like a golden bronze goddess out there, right? And Sean was right there on your side, and the camera started rolling, and it was it was time to be yeah. in your glory. What, I was what? like, wow, like, okay, shit is getting real. We got these sandals here all staring at us. So I'm already like awkward because everybody's just staring at me. Then it was like a million degrees outside. So I got like my makeup. My Asian, my eyelash glue dropping to my eyes. I'm trying to be cute. I'm smiling all hard. It was a lot going on in my head. Um, but yeah, I was like, wait, we're gonna have to like choose someone. Like, and then like when we had to meet everybody, it was just so much. It was like overwhelming. It was overwhelming. Yeah. It was a lot. But I definitely was like, shit is getting real. Like, that's when everything really hit me. Like, this is like for real. Like, yep. this is not you know a joke. This is like dead ass. It's not remember, a thought anymore. What about you, Sean? I remember just looking over and I saw Frank waving like, hey. <laughs> and my brain was just like, how, how, am I, how am I about to navigate yeah. these interactions? Because I don't want to like be rude, but at the same time, I have to set my boundaries because Ooh. everyone's here for an experience and we all signed up, so... I can't get mad if somebody's trying to figure out like where you yep. stand. And I'm not gonna lie, it had never even really crossed my mind like that until I was like in the moment and I'm like, oh. Like when yeah. when we heard about the show, like it didn't even cross our minds that like I wanted to go to like street. Right. Like, I didn't even think of like all the endless possibilities of different couples. Right. Pansexual, non-binary, bisexual. Yes. I didn't think of any of that. Never talked about like, that. You know, so when it all happened, everything was, especially, I know how Sean gets. One, he's hard to read, right? He has a So like hard thing. to read. And then two, so <laughs> hard to We would be like, <laughs> Sean, <laughs> I mean, like, are you are you good? I can, stop, Sean. <laughs> I can read every, even on the same face, I can read it. Right. So I knew that he knew, like, like, of course, the signals, no one knew anything about us aside yeah. from how we looked. So I knew that 
people on the other end, you know, probably like, mm, you know, I wonder, you know, what they're that is. They're my hair and dye brown, so it's giving mixed signals. Maybe, maybe not. want to be sad or like, like, let's say if, you know, some guys liked you, they, they did ask me, Greg, like, you know, and I didn't want to like say it, but I should have just said it to be honest, but I just didn't want to bring anyone well, down. You know what I mean? To ruin mm-hmm. the whole So I have a hard time sometimes with just getting it to you. So, <laughs> so, so now I'm just having these conversations with everybody. They're like, oh, yeah, but you said, come talk to you. Yeah, I just want to say, I said, you got to talk to him. She yeah. set you up. She we need to have a football in your court, because I don't know. I mean, we're here. Me. Well, I mean, y'all did say that. Y'all were just coming there and see what was going to happen, right? No expectations. Right. No expectations. Right. And I will say, like, most of our conversation going into it was about, like, a girl. And, you know, it was more so, like, that's where our edge were. So that's also why once I was there, I was like, damn. Didn't even think about all of this, you know? Frank's big ass. Well, I mean, well. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Like, I agree. the last it thing you would have been well. thinking about was Frank's big ass talking about. Right. <laughs> Frank was like, <laughs> Frank was like, hey. Because Frank was going to pick two people up at the same time. He's a big know. man. Frank. Right. And I say that, I say that lovingly. That's a, he is a, he is a man. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> Um, okay, so tell me when you when you when you when you did make your first choice, I remember that <laughs> I remember that being like what we don't show on the show was like, did you mean to say that out loud? Did you know what you was gonna say? Because it seemed like <laughs> y'all were still up until the very point of saying a name, you were still working out who you were going to choose. Yeah, we literally were still working it out. Yeah. I say that like going into our first choice, even like like you said, honestly, up on that stage, you were still talking about it. Like I'm trying to read him, trying to read me. I and think then, I think you was an upset. Right, and she's telling me like, you just do it, go go go, and I'm like, man. Uh, but what kind of led us to our first choice was uh, we had a great conversation with Sanu, so it was. Like, all right, out of everybody here that we had a conversation with, we yeah. actually talked to you the longest. That, yeah. So, all right, let's just roll our dice that way because at the moment, that seems like our safety. Yeah, this is the first, the first choice anyway, so let's right. just, like, try the best. Right. Mm-hmm. That's kind of, like, what my mindset was. Yeah. And so then you, she, Sanu walks over. Or Sanu steps down. Right. Um, there you had several people step down. Um, but Sanu steps down. You 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 agree that Sanu is going to enter your relationship as as uh, another partner, and then it's time to go to bed. What were the conversations like when y'all first got back to the house? Like, did you talk about like, okay, your toothbrush gonna go over there? Did you say, you know, oh. I know y'all walked in the rooms and you saw the photos, but like, what were the conversations like? Yeah, often we did like pre plan or think about. Honestly, I didn't think about any of that. So when I did get back like to the room, I noticed the shift into Sean's like whole demeanor. Yeah, like a like, like a weirdo shift. Like you're a weirdo. You know what I mean? He wasn't being his natural <laughs> self. So I'm like, okay, this is weird. This is like, I was like, I was like that meme. I was just in the bed sitting there like this. He was just sitting there in bed. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I knew. I said, I don't know. This is gonna work because, because I'm sitting there like, all right. Man, this is happening now. Yeah. So somebody, she's packing her bags, talking. I'm like, oh my God. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, should I be in the middle? Who's going to be in yeah, the middle? Yeah, I think he was thinking a lot because he was in the middle and just sitting in the bed. And I'm right. just like, I can't tonight. Then she's like, <laughs> you know, you're like, relax, it's okay. And I'm thinking to myself, like, are you sure it's okay? Sean, you what? So were you nervous? Yeah, because this is our first night, you know, with our person. And I'm like, all right, now starts that navigation and that conversation and all these things are about to start happening because we're now in the process. And again, it's the blind lead the blind. So it'd be different if we've experienced or even had a threesome, I would kind of know like our boundaries or yep. I know, you know, how to how to maneuver. I had no idea. So I just wrote. Yeah, and when he freezes, it's just not good. I mean, she's already low-key freaking out. So now that I'm gone. She's just there like, man, 
Yeah, but you weren't making it any better. I know. Like, you like, <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm trying to act normal. I'm the ball back in your so court. I'm trying so hard to act normal that it was killing me. Like I was like, it was a point. <laughs> <laughs> it was a point of, like everybody was getting dressed and she just took off her book. I mean, this all happened so fast. So I had to act like you know, like it's nothing. Like you know what I mean? It was a lot. That also, I would say too, was like getting used to that, like. Unless she got it naked, I was just like, oh my That's God. That's the lie. Because, San, because Sanu has... Because Sanu has had experience in polyamory. She, you know, her parents yeah. are in, poly, in, a, in a polyamorous relationship. She has been in polyamorous relationships before um, and is, uh, I believe, even a, um, a speaker um, on the, the subject. And so I think that she was trying to... Uh, um, uh, uh, initiate or invite everyone to be as comfortable. Like another day. Like, it wasn't even coming around. I was Right, right, right. I somebody, and then out of nowhere, they just, like, it's just, it was so bad. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're going to fast. It took y'all fast. Huh? Well, it sounds like it took you fast. And what you're describing is what a lot of people have to figure out. Like, Sean mentioned boundaries. A lot of people have to figure yeah. out those boundaries as they go. So y'all are having like this experience and then you're having this experience with someone who has experience in polyamory. And so that just brings up the question for me, what was y'all's idea of polyamory or non-monogamy before you got there? Like, what did you think it was? Um, so again, I'll say we didn't have conversations and it was always about us. So I feel like Joe and us, knew what we wanted and kind of when we kind of we never like we never like tried to be serious about it serious like, about like, it joking about it but we always looked at it more so like hmm I don't know if how you feel about it how you know what I'm saying how we feel about it but I'd be open to maybe having something that wasn't super serious and seeing if it led into something serious right. versus when we got onto the show it was kind of starting with let's make it something serious and explore these feelings and go from there. So I, so I guess for us, it kind of approached us from the, from the opposite end. But I would say like, we were never against it because yeah. again, you know, we don't know. We're not really one to, we can't really gauge our mind on something without, we both have to experience something to know gotcha. like, where do I start. Like I knew it was gonna come with a lot. So yeah. I was just like ready to just face it and give it a shot, yeah. honestly. When well, you talk about facing it, we had the experience, the, the uh, safe word with, with the boundaries yes. uh, as our, as our um, uh, relationship uh, session. And <laughs> do you remember the, the, do you remember the safe word exercise? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> the very first one. I, I remember. I remember. Oh, hello. Yes. Sean, what was going through your mind when you were in the hot seat, so to speak, right? So you were there and Sanu was doing everything that she was doing. Brittany was watching and you were, <laughs> and you were there. What was, what was going through your mind? What were you thinking? Um... I mean, I was just sitting there like, this shit is crazy, you know? <laughs> because at the same time, again, with each one, I'm checking her face to see, like, yep. she can stay there and say whatever she wants to say to y'all, but we know each other's body language. Is right, crazy. right. And I know your body language, so right. I knew. Like, so I'm looking up at her after everything, and she's like, it's cool. And I can tell, like, okay, you're putting yourself in this experiment, and you're showing up and you're actually allowing it to happen. I can tell within you, you're still processing it as it's happening, but it made me a little bit more relaxed to see that like, I could tell where she was and I knew like, oh, oh, like, all right, we'll be fine, you know? But he did tell me that he could take it, take it like, he was dealing with it, but like her talking sexy, like you were saying the whole thing, he for real. He said that oh, her talking I mean, like sexy know. and stuff, I was like, really like, he could like, she couldn't take it seriously. Like, it was weird. She was, like, speaking sexy talk. Yeah, when you had her talking like, the whole, like, oh, the whole sensual, being that I just met her, and we haven't even really, like, for instance, sometimes people think that, guys, you're cool with this, you're fine with that. Uh, I mean, I still want to know you to a certain degree before we kind of engage in some sort of, like, sensual yeah. act. 
Or in this case, like you saying things to me, I really can't receive it how you give it to me because I don't know you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I've been at the game for a long time. I've been with her for like four years. You know what I'm saying? So I really haven't been out here messing with other girls, someone talking to me kind of crazy, or me doing that to somebody else, you know, at all. I'm with her. So having another person yeah. just threw me off too. And, you know, I pride myself on being like faithful and for one woman. So to also open myself back up to mm. receive another woman that was a whole process so we went itself. into it knowing that like yeah. this is what we're gonna try to do yeah. we're gonna get this a shot see if that's what we can do in the future right. yeah. a break outside of your norm yeah, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was fully open yeah. but you know for the, the whole process yeah. scott do you remember how sean was looking like just lying there on that chair <laughs> yeah. while this was happening sean was so like he was like Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. Before we run out of time, I do want to talk about the okay. choice with Sanu because I know that it was full of, in a very short period of time, full of some ups and some downs. You, at Brittany, at one point, Man. I think you said to, mm -hmm. you at one point you said, you know, you guys were talking about, um, I think at a breakfast or something like that, you guys were talking about um, uh, what poly should be, how it should be fun, how it should be so, it shouldn't be bogged down with so much um, heaviness, and you said, you said to Sanu, <laughs> point blank, you know, that was our problem with you, is that we didn't get the fun, we got the lecture. Yeah. Um, did you? Yeah, like, come on. Like, no. no, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, that's like with anyone that I date, even dating you, I wouldn't want it to be like a lecture, a sit down, or, you know, deep like somebody room, get a teacher. I don't have time for a whole teacher-student relationship. Okay, I get that you're more knowledgeable in this field. Kudos to you, that's great. Uh, but for it to always be educational, you know what I mean, conversation and talking about this, talking about that, right? Bro, let's just have some fun. Let's take a shot, let's hop on the pool. You know what I mean? Let it be natural. Like, it's just so forced and just so, like, you know, I, I quickly realized that, you know, we're not really compatible. I was trying to make it work, and I think me trying to make it work, I don't know how I am, I get overwhelmed that I like. Like I, th I had a session where I like broke down because when I felt overwhelmed of trying to pretend that I'm like interested, it just like, it kills me. So like I was yeah. trying so hard that I ended up like breaking down. And then at one yeah. point she said, then you go cry about me. No, no, I didn't cry about you sis. I didn't cry about you. I cried about the fact that I felt overwhelmed <laughs> trying to make this work. Right. So yeah. I was kind of like yeah. a little scared. Like, oh my God, like what if Polly isn't gonna work for us because I'm judging it off of just sign up. So I'm thinking like, oh my God, why am I here? This is gonna, I have all these thoughts and emotions going in my brain. Like, oh my God, like, I'm trying this, it's not gonna work. And I'm she's serious. our first interaction. And also I don't wanna be mean and you know, but this is too serious for me. Everyone else is gonna be having fun. They're wearing matching shorts. And I'm just like, you know, <laughs> like, it's like, well, what are we doing? Did you have moments where you were, where you're, in your communication, you wished that you maybe said something in a different way, that maybe a conversation yeah. that was public would have been more private. Did either of you have those moments where you were like, man, I think watching that back, like I think that maybe we could have done this different. I honestly don't really have regrets. Like it is what it is. Like if you got, you know, like I don't really like overthink everything. I feel like, um, and I'll just say this, this is, you know, more so something that we also made sure to show up and be a part of. We never wanted to be the angry blacks or the blacks that like said crazy things. So I think we did a good job of making sure that we did say something. Although some people, if you don't know us, you may take it a certain way. But once you like 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 once you know us, we never said anything from like a an, an ill standpoint. We may have just conveyed how we felt, or if something bothered us, like straight to the point, to the best of our ability. Yeah. So I don't think we gonna have anything where we're just like man. What I, I what I will say though is that. If something does catch me off guard, I have a, like, I naturally kind of like freeze a little bit and I don't really know what to say. But once I sleep on it, I had enough time to think, I'm ready, I'm ready for that heat. Like I'm ready to deliver what I thought about for, you know, hours, several hours. Yeah. So I will say that I do like the fact that I don't always react right away. I sometimes mm -hmm. wait. I'm like a slow processor. I have to really figure out what happened. So yeah, I don't really have regrets, honestly. Y'all are the bomb. This has been great. We could do this for another two hours.